Hi everyone and welcome back to another day on the farm. This was a beautiful Saturday morning. Uh, my family goes and bowls on a week and they were gone this morning so I took advantage of the time at the house by myself to work on some projects that I had. So first I'm going to tackle all of these eggs that I have. My chickens had stopped laying for about three months and now they're starting to lay again. So I'm going to take all of these eggs and crack them in my food processor and um, you can see that I'm saving all the shells because I'm going to put them in the oven and dry them so that I can give them back to my chickens. But I'm going to put all these eggs into my blender and blend them up and I'm going to put them into silicone molds so that I can put them in the freezer and then put them in my freeze dryer. So next year when or at the end of this year when my chickens stop laying again I will have fresh eggs um, that I can reconstitute from my freeze dryer. Oh, you could see where I dropped one of my eggs all in the floor and had to kind of stop and get all that cleaned up. It was a huge mess. So here I am kind of cleaning that mess up. It was it was really bad. Um, cleaning egg in the floor is not an easy task. So I cleaned that up and ended, ended up blending up all of these eggs, putting them into silicone molds and putting them into the freezer. When I freeze dry things, I usually like to freeze them in the freezer first before I put them in the freeze dryer. It just speeds up the process. And so using the silicone molds help me to be able to freeze dry more at a time than just pouring the eggs on the tray and freezing it on the tray. I can get a whole lot more eggs per tray when I'm doing it this way. When I get done putting all of the eggs in the molds, I do like to let the molds kind of sit on the counter for just a few minutes and get all the air bubbles out and that way I'm not freezing a whole lot of air bubbles into my eggs. I always do a bad job about not counting um, how many eggs that I have here so it's definitely at least uh, three or four dozen eggs that I processed if not more. Um, most of them I am using for my freeze dryer and then I'm going to take the rest of them that are left over that don't fit into my molds and I'm going to um, cook them in the oven for an egg bake. Uh, my, my oldest son and I like to eat these for breakfast. For this egg bake, I just left it plain, but you can put anything in your egg bake. Sometimes I put bacon, sausage, all kinds of different things, cheese, but this time, like I said, just plain. I spray a cookie sheet with olive oil. You can use whatever kind of oil you want and blend them up in the blender. That way it makes a cohesive mixture and you don't have clumps of egg white or just a clump of egg yolk and I salt and pepper them very well so that they taste good and I just put them in the oven at 350 for about 20 minutes and then um, I cut them after they cool and put them in a Ziploc bag. These are really a really good way to use up a lot of eggs if you have an abundance of eggs. You see that I have to very carefully put that into the oven and uh, like I said I cook it at 350, 20 minutes and uh, before you know it they're done and they're so good. We love to eat them for breakfast. So here I am very carefully putting my eggs into the freezer so that they can freeze. Not easy. I was trying not to get egg everywhere <laughs> during this. Um, First thing this morning, I actually made um, a chocolate sourdough um, loaf, so it's sitting and proofing on the counter. And then I am bringing some of my plants out, not all of them. I left my peppers inside, but I'm bringing some of my plants out from underneath my grow lights and bringing them out on this beautiful day and letting them have some sunlight um, because that's the best way is for them to be outside and start to get used to the weather so I can actually plant them out into the bed soon. I have a podcast with one of my good friends and I needed to come in here this morning after I got some things done and look at a few things that had to do with our podcast here. I'm eating some cinnamon sugar sourdough that I made earlier in the week and oh it's so good. I put some butter on that and enjoyed that for my breakfast 
this morning and I'm just sitting here getting a little bit of work done that I needed to get done for the podcast. If you're interested in listening to our podcast, it is a fitness-based podcast and it is called For the Love of the Map and you can actually watch it on YouTube or you can listen to it wherever you like to listen to your podcast. After I finished with that, I decided I needed to get some potatoes in the ground. I had bought some organic potatoes from Costco and they were starting to sprout. So I, um, it's the, the beginning of March. I hope I'm not doing this too soon, but I just uh, decided to put them in my raised beds this year. So I'm just making a place for them in the ground. I put four in each row. I didn't even cut the potatoes or anything. I just put them in whole and just buried them with the soil and I'm leaving some room to add more soil and more leaves or whatever organic material that so that I can heal them when they start to grow. Um, you want to heal your potatoes. So I decided that if these don't work that I'm not out anything because I didn't want these potatoes to go to waste. So I went ahead and put them in the ground. And then I decided to also plant some sugar snap peas. They are some of my favorite. And um, you can see here I have these trellises that my husband built me on my raised bed. So just cleaning out some of the weeds and then I'm going to bring in kind of some fresh compost to plant these sugar snap peas into and it's good to plant sugar snap peas in the beginning um, or the early spring so this is the perfect time to get those into the ground now you can soak your sugar snap peas overnight and I probably should have done that and it makes it easier for them to germinate but I decided to just go put them into the ground and see what happens I used a whole pack of seeds per row, so I just scattered them on there as evenly as I could and covered them up with soil and I come back and put another layer of compost on top of them because I don't want the birds to find them and dig them up and eat, eat them because I want to eat them. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't want to eat the seeds, but I want to eat them after they grow. So here is my carrot patch and I planted these at the end of the fall and I just threw some seeds in the ground and walked away. Now at first I kind of got mad when I saw the little itty bitty carrots that I got out of this but I mean again I just threw some carrots into the ground and I walked away for like four months and this is what I got so I'm, I'm not really mad about it so I'm very thankful that I have this wash sink in my um, washroom and I'm able to tackle jobs like this that are kind of dirty so that I don't have to do them outside with the water hose so I just brought all the carrots into my wash sink I cut the tops off but I still left some of the green on them and rinsed them off really well under the water and I you know again I'm not so mad about this harvest I mean it's not they're not the biggest carrots and they're not you know Oh, it's not a whole lot of carrots in the, in the end, but I didn't do anything but throw some seeds in the ground again back in like October or November and just walked away from them. I didn't have to do anything to these carrots. They just stayed in the bed all winter long and they are some of the sweetest carrots because they were outside in the cold weather and in the frost and stuff like that. So um, the carrot tops will not go to waste. I immediately take them out and I give them to my chickens and they loved them. They scratched through them and ate them up really quick. So this is my little carrot harvest and actually it's quite a bit. It can probably feed us for a meal or two if I cut them up and put them in different things. So I'm going to put these in a Ziploc bag and put them in the refrigerator. Now I am getting out the eggshells. I put these in the oven at 200 degrees for 40 minutes and I'm gonna let them cool. And then I tackle my egg bake. Um, I just cut it into squares 
and put them in a Ziploc baggie and I put them in the refrigerator for eating later or really eating through the week. And this is a really good way to use up those eggs if you have chickens. So now that the eggshells have cooled, I'm going to put them in my food processor and I'm just going to blend them up. It only takes seconds to do this. It's really quick. I don't always do this. I don't always save my eggshells, but when I do a big batch of stuff like this, it's a good time to just keep them. And as you can see, they're just little crumbs and I'm just going to take them out to my chickens and give them to them and it, it will give them extra calcium as they need and they'll just eat them as they feel that they need to and then I can make some more and fill it up when they need some more or when they get low. When I went into my freezer to put my eggs in, I realized I had a whole ham hock in there, so I decided I needed to use it. So I put some pinto beans in my crock pot. I added some onion powder, garlic powder, onion, uh, minced onion, dried minced onion, paprika, and then here's some um, peppers that I um, dehydrated from my garden last year. I added the ham hock in, and then I filled my crock pot up with water all the way to the top. I'll put the crock pot on high for a few hours and then I'll turn it down to low. After six to eight hours, the beans should be done. Now I'm the only one that will eat these, but I went to the garden and noticed that my collard greens were ready to use. So I picked a bunch of them, brought them in, washed them, seasoned them up really well. And here I'm pouring over some chicken stock that I made this week. And I'm making sure I get all the good stuff out of there. And I even scraped the chicken fat out of this container and put it in there. And I'm gonna put a lid on it and let this simmer. So now I'm going to finish this chocolate sourdough bread that I started this morning. It's sat in this bowl for about five hours and now I'm going to take it out and I'm going to stretch it and put it in my banneton basket. I know it sounds weird to have a chocolate sourdough, but this does not have a lot of sugar in it. So you can eat this bread savory or sweet. So I'm just going to stitch this dough up and let it sit on the counter for about an hour to finish rising all the way. And I'm going to put my Dutch oven in the oven and turn the oven on to 500 degrees. I know it's strange to put it in a Food Lion or Walmart bag, but I did not want to put anything over the top of the actual bread and mess it up, nor did I want to put any saran wrap or anything else on it, and I didn't want it to dry out. So here I'm taking a piece of parchment paper and I'm cutting it to make a circle for the bread so I can put it into my Dutch oven. And then I'm going to score my bread and I am not the best at scoring sourdough. It's something that I definitely need to work on, but I mean in the end after you bake the bread, all that matters is that it tastes good.
I'm gonna place the bread in my Dutch oven and bake it on, I believe it was 425 for 25 minutes. And then I take the lid off and I bake it at 350 for 30 minutes. As you can see, this bread just turned out beautifully and it tasted really good too. I cut a piece off of each end while it was hot and I put some butter on it and my husband and I definitely enjoyed this bread. As you can see, it was a really busy day on the homestead for me today and I got a lot of stuff done. It was definitely a warm, hot, sunny day and really made me believe that spring was right around the corner. So I hope that you guys have a great day. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Bye.